and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Well, today we want to talk about the bonus stages of Street Fighter 2. Let's face it, Street Fighter 1, 2, 3, 4, 3D, you're all over the shop. Bonus stages have become a big, big part of Street Fighter. Man, I say that, they've actually been rescinded and less and less we see the popular bonus stages of Street Fighter. I don't know about you guys, but when I played Street Fighter back in the day, uh, when I was playing Street Fighter in the arcade, Street Fighter 1 and 2, one of the things I loved the most was a bonus stage. Two or three rounds in, you hadn't been defeated. And in the case of Street Fighter 2, the classic everyone knows, you get to beat the living crap out of a car. Which, let's face it, who gets to do that on a regular basis and not end up in prison? So, without further ado, I've talked for long enough, let's start talking about these bonus stages. So, first thing first, Street Fighter 1. This insane music, you got to, it's a bit like Mortal Kombat with that test your might. So straight away, you had to break through different materials throughout the levels. But that was basically it, what you saw there. There was actually another bonus stage in Street Fighter 1, both in the home and arcade version. And it was namely breaking the boards in 10 seconds. And again, given the hilarious controls and terrible jump kick animations, that was very impressive how quickly that was performed. Now if we move on beyond that, after Street Fighter 1 of course, was Street Fighter 2. And Street Fighter 2 had several bonus stages. The most popular was not this. We know the most popular one and we're saving that one till last. But the barrel stage here is looking like an absolute doddle and that's because it's with two players. And the barrels themselves got progressively harder. So the, some of the barrels needed a couple of hits to break. Moreover, the bounce rate it got higher and higher and higher as you see there. So with two people, fine, very easy. But if you tried pulling it out of the bag in, in a one player, hard enough. Now the barrel stage, as it looks like, it should be noted, um, the thing that's overlooked mostly with this stage, what you're seeing done by pros here, is that fire will set you alight. So if you're on top of it, or I say that for some reason, maybe this is the Commodore, but oh no, there we are finally, the barrels themselves could set you on fire. The other thing about bonus stages that's largely overlooked is you'd always remember it's not the place for special moves. Almost no special moves in most scenarios, you'll see a few exceptions today, are ever useful. Most bonus stages require standard hits. So we've got Blanca and Dalsim here using the breakable wall. Now it doesn't matter, you're not fighting to get from one to the other side, it really is a race. You may also notice, if for one I'm not rabbiting, that the music is pretty good as well. Um, Oh, the version we're looking at here, I believe, is the Commodore version. It might even be the SNES, but I doubt it with that sound quality. But once again, you were facing against each other, but... Ah, oh, the great one, the car. Still in Street Fighter 2, remember? Now, the car was continued uh, in later versions of Super Street Fighter 2. We're not looking at that today, because it's pretty much the same bonus stage. Um, but it, not all versions had the car. But once again, as you can see, you don't need to use um, the uh, special moves to do this and what you also see there is a technique that was utilized where if you had two people taking it in turns because it only identified a certain number of hits but there you go straight away once again and here we are in Street Fighter 3 there we go we made it into the next leap now look at the size of that car in Street Fighter 3 we had a much bigger car to play with and now it's actually viable to use some of your special moves you didn't need to use them, but it was just because you were dealing with a larger surface area and Street Fighter 3 were uh, actually encompassed more of the uh, combo maneuvers that had multiple hits per attack. It actually became to your interest to perform supers like that or moves that included one or two hits. So there we go, we've got the car's wheels off as well there. But no, as you can see, Street Fighter 3, they gave people what they wanted. They removed all that business with the barrels which I personally am a little disappointed with. But they did include one other bonus stage. It's a bit quirky. But it's not bad given it gets you having to use the impact system. Now those that aren't familiar, the impact system that you see on this bonus stage, where you've got balls being thrown at you, is tapping forward at the exact moment that you're hit by your opponent. Now the ball's at the bottom of the screen there, you can see the count out there. And there we go. That was a perfect. But that was a kind of quirky one, that never left this game. No one cared about that bonus stage for you know many, many reasons. But there was another bonus stage on top of that. But now on top of that was a modified version. Now if we look at this, we've got Street Fighter EX, the barrel stage. Now once again, what they did was utilize an already existing stage. Uh, I believe this is using the training mode that was included in the PS1 version. But 
they utilised the existing uh, idea of barrels and then just incorporated this new thing in. But once again, the idea that they would use super moves to cancel out, um, and also different coloured barrels for different scores and different effects. It's quite nice, it's kind of tiered level on that bonus stage. This is clearly someone that knows what they're doing, of course, that have understood exactly where the barrels are coming from, and we're looking at a potential perfect. There you go, they've, hit the, they've got the 50k bonus as well. Um, but no, the bonus stages of Street Fighter are pretty impressive. The fact that people think of Street Fighter and they think of combos and one-on-one -on -one combat, largely because these bonus stages, I think whether um, designers have decided that there's not a lot of money in resourcing and creating these. Oh, here we go, the big barrel. This is the one that needs some work, and if you've got the super, there we go, he's utilised the super uh, dragon punch there for that super. So again, it's quite a long bonus stage. It's probably one of the longest ones we've talked about. It's about two minutes long. Um, and the fact this guy's got uh, looking potentially like he's going to get a perfect on it is truly astounding. Because um, look at the difficulty. Look at what we're dealing with here. And once again, this is the third time that super bar has been filled up. No doubt he's saving that for something special. I'll be honest, if he doesn't get a perfect now, I'll be devastated for the fella. There we go, got some more quick barrels there. But again, this barrel stage is far, far more intense than that first one we saw uh, played by Zangief and E Honda in Street Fighter 2. But doesn't this make you really want to play Street Fighter EX? Street Fighter EX, I genuinely believe, is one of the most overlooked... Oh, look at that snazzy show-off there at the end. One of the most overlooked Street Fighters over, uh, for me, personally. The other bonus stage in Street Fighter EX, as you're about to see, when it loads, is in Street Fighter one, EX 2. And with this is where you had to take out a, meet, uh, a satellite before it crashed into the world. Now, again, this was very much part and parcel with the ridiculous nature of the Street Fighter EX 3D series. The series where you had super moves that would cause meteorites and all kinds of mental stuff happening. The IRK99 satellite bonus stage was actually quite part and parcel of the rest of that game. Any other game would have looked at that like it was crazy town. Now in the closing credits you can see of EX2, this is for the PlayStation 1 version, um, in the, at the end of the level you got to fight up against this Chroma Man, and again I can't quite remember his name off the top of my head, but it was just an opportunity, you had infinite super moves, just to practice throughout the credits. Now, whether this was because they believed people wouldn't give a crap about reading the credits, which I think is a little bit um, um, judgmental of Capcom and Akira, but still nevertheless, it is nice they've included this in the credits. This isn't the only Street Fighter credits-based uh, bonus stage. There's one coming up right at the end, probably my favorite of all. Um, but the Street Fighter EX is a big place in my heart. You may have noticed it's featured on the channel a few times because I think it's one of the most overlooked Street Fighter games in terms of playability. When it was put out there against the likes of Virtua Fighter and Tekken and Soul Calibur, but staying on message, um, this bonus stage is probably the least, this is kind of cheating calling this a bonus stage because you can skip it at any time, you don't get any real monetary value for it and it really is just uh, to be used as an addition to the credit scene. Um, but still, nevertheless, it's nice to be able to use all those super moves, and particularly the super cancels, where you can start performing one by going into another. Um, but here we go, I think we're at the end now. Here we go, we went for the level three super, the crazy super there, right at the end. So, and here we are, the end of Street Fighter EX3. Now this, or I don't know why they didn't include this in the game. This is by far, with the exception of the noise some of these enemies make when they die, is by far and large the most fun bonus stage. You can talk about the car till you're blue in the face. Look at this. So you completed Street Fighter EX3 for the PS2. I believe it was released in 2003. I might be wrong there. Might be a slight a fraction earlier. But when Street Fighter EX3 was released, once you completed the game, what you were faced with was, and that was a tag team game I should mention, you weren't uh, dealt with facing your opponent in a tag team ending the way you were expecting the likes of Double Dragon, but what you were left with was facing all of these enemies, several of which, by the way, feature in other games. Take a good look at that big guy who was in the purple earlier. Um, 
you ended up facing against wave after wave of enemies who got bigger in size, power, speed and ability. So this during the credits is quite counterintuitive because I'll be honest, I'm not even playing this right now and I am not watching a stitch of those credit names. I couldn't tell you who Hiroshiro Kabori is and I won't remember who he is with the exception of that awful scream of the female characters when they die. All I'm concentrating on is the sheer chaos on screen and it's lovely to see a 3D walk along Street Fighter game utilising all of those wonderful moves. They should, should, should have incorporated this into the game and I'm surprised they didn't think to do that. Um, once again, you can uh, em get emulated versions of EX3, uh, you know, if you were only original game of course, but I would add that this mode is only available in the credit scene. There are have people have gone to the top and try and strip this out of the game. Apparently, there is some extra mode in a collector's edition. But really, if you want to play this, all you have is this narrow um, credit scene. Now, once again, of course, whoever you're playing at the time, you can complete the game with Garuda, Akuma, Bison, whoever. Whoever you complete the game with, that is who you have to fight up against wave after wave of enemies. And this guy who is just getting bigger. Anyone notice that? Every time uh, Ryu defeats this guy, he only gets bigger. And I believe uh, this may be drawing to a close very shortly. Which is a shame because it would have been lovely to see just how big this bugger gets. But how grating is that noise? And also keep a look at that counter on the bottom right telling us how many enemies are being defeated. Look how big this guy's become now, isn't it? See, don't get me wrong, I love, love, love the Carbona stage, but you cannot tell me this doesn't look like a horrific amount of fun. I also think it's hilarious, sweet kicking the giant. And here we are, I believe we might have even reached the limit of how big this guy gets. But I fear that's the end of that bonus stage, which brings us neatly into the next Street Fighter game. Which leads us neatly into Street Fighter 4, and of course, the return of the barrel stage. Now, the barrel stage in this game, slightly different. They've gone for that kind of three-dimensional look of things, but it should still be said that the, the theory is pretty much still the same. No colors this time. Ever so slight deviation, as you can see. Although I would go as far as to say that the physics here isn't exactly realistic, with the way some of these barrels are bouncing against the way of gravity. But we won't have a go at that too hard, shall we? Now, at the moment, this guy seems to be really making this easy to watch. Um, let's see if we're going to see anything more than just standard punches and kicks, eh? But at the moment, he seems to be handling it pretty well. Now, he's let that go for a reason. Oh, there we go. He knew what he was doing. That was a pro move, and that is how one bonus stages. Got to say, a little bit tame now, if I'm honest. And lastly, of course, Street Fighter 4's final bonus stage. Unsurprisingly, going full circle, we get back to the car. Much shinier, much sleeker, and here we have the car from Street Fighter 4. Now, unfortunately, there were no bonus stages in Street Fighter 5. This is the last official, to date, Street Fighter bonus stage. This car, look at that license plate registration cap, 99999. Not a clue what the nines are for, maybe you can tell me. But this car probably makes the most noise. It's probably the most satisfying car of all to be destroyed. But that really is it. That is the last bonus stage of the Street Fighter universe. I hope Capcom really get their head together and start re-including those because I know I'm, I'm not the only one that loves Street Fighter bonus stages. Um, I hope you've enjoyed these videos. Do click my uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and check out my other videos but otherwise thank you for watching and that is one pissed off fella whose car just bit the dust thanks for watching